Hey guys, if you've seen the last couple of videos, I've been asking for likes on the videos. If we can get this video to 1,000 likes, the previous two videos to 1,000 likes, any one of those hit 1,000 likes, we're gonna go buy this epic flower horn right here. Make sure that you like the videos, and let's get into this today. Hey everybody, listen, it is nice in Texas today. We got some rain last night. It's down into the 70s, mid 80s today, and we're gonna be outside working on this video today. And what we're gonna be doing is creating a terrarium out of a piece of furniture that we picked up at home goods so what this is is this is a little acrylic cart and the cool part about it is, is it has a tray that slides in here like a drawer and what we're going to do is we're going to take this out and we're going to create an entire terrarium inside of this tray put it back in there and turn this little tiny acrylic cart into an epic terrarium you're not going to want to miss this make sure you like this video and let's get this done We're gonna use some standard terrarium type materials, starting with some pea gravel, as well as some jungle mix. If you need a recipe for jungle mix, you can go back and watch the last video that I put out. You can see that in the top right corner of the screen. And I go through what this recipe is. This stuff is great for terrariums. We're also gonna be using some tropical plants, a rabbit's foot fern, some Christmas moss, some dragon stone, some cork and some sticks and a little bit of slate. Now, what I wanna talk about specifically is this Christmas moss right here. If you want some Christmas moss for free, to go in your terrarium or your aquarium, all you have to do is this. Go to freshwaterscrub.com, pick you up a set of terrarium tools. They are less than $10 and you will get a free portion of Christmas moss with your terrarium tool purchase right now at freshwaterscrub.com. So make sure you go and do that. We're also gonna be using some pillow moss, which looks like this. This stuff looks amazing and it is going to do great in this terrarium. And then we're gonna be stocking this thing when we're done with some live creatures. So you don't wanna miss this. So if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and like this video so we can get to a thousand likes so we can get this flower horn. So with that, let's go ahead and get into building this terrarium today. All right, well, this is our little nightstand. It's pretty simplistic. It's made of acrylic, but the cool thing about it is, is that it is clear and there is a drawer in it. And what we're gonna be doing today, we're gonna be turning this drawer right here into a fully bioactive terrarium. And then we're gonna use this tray right here. Now granted, today's video is not sponsored by API, but they do sponsor some of our content. And we're gonna be using this right here in the fish room to hold some of our API products. So let's get started. We're gonna go ahead and take our tray out of here. We'll drop that right here on the table. Primarily, we're gonna be working inside of this tray. Let's go ahead and start with creating a drainage layer inside of this tray. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna start with some pea gravel. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a small portion of pea gravel right here in the bottom. We just want a little thin layer, nothing crazy, just enough to hold some moisture. We want it completely covering the bottom. Perfect amount of pea gravel here to hold some moisture in the bottom of this tray. With that, we're also going to need some sort of a barrier. And for our barrier, what we're gonna be using, we're gonna go ahead and lay this weed barrier right here out onto the table to be able to cut it. And our cutting is gonna be pretty simplistic. So we're gonna take this tray, we're gonna sit it right here on top of this weed barrier. We're gonna take us a razor blade. Be very careful, you don't wanna cut yourself. And we're going to, as I almost cut myself, like seriously, I'm telling you not to cut yourself and I almost cut my thumb off. So we're gonna take this, we're just going to run it along the outside edge of our little tray. Simply lift it off. We now have our piece of weed barrier perfectly cut and fit to separate our drainage layer from our actual soil layer. Now that we have that done, what we wanna go ahead and do is add some of this jungle mix. And this jungle mix, like I said earlier, if you need a jungle mix recipe, this is on my last video and you can go find that mix recipe there. But for right now, we're just gonna start laying this stuff in here and I'm gonna start with kind of laying it up into the corners and the sides just to keep this piece of felt stuck down and then we'll come back in and scape this as we need to. But for right now, we'll just get it right up into the sides here. 
So now that we have a good base layer in here, we're gonna go ahead and start laying out what our scape inside of this terrarium is going to look like. All right, well, now that we have a lot of this jungle mix in here, we wanna go ahead and start scaping this. Well, a few different elements we're gonna be using today. One of the things that will happen is there will be a lamp sitting on top of this table, and it's gonna be in this back right corner right here. If you notice, there's a notch in this, which is actually the handle of the drawer. We're gonna actually put that towards the back because we don't want any of our live creatures to escape. So this will actually be the back right corner right here, we're going to build up some sort of a mountainous area in this back corner. So looking at this, I can either use some cork to help build that up, which I may use a little bit of cork. I can use some of this dragon stone as well, which I may use that. I don't know yet, but what we want to do is start putting this in there and trying to figure out exactly how we want this to kind of look. And I kind of like the way the cork looks more than the dragon stone but I'm gonna need some more cork. This is why I always keep leftover supplies just simply because, well, you never know when you might need something like an extra piece of cork. Look at that, that goes together quite nicely. And then we can finish that off over here. And now what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and backfill all this section back here with some more jungle mix. And maybe what we'll do is take this dragon stone actually and kind of put this stuff up in here and kind of bury it in to this up here to kind of give it a, a rocky structure. Like I said, you won't actually be able to see this once this is all put together because the lamp will actually be sitting on top of this. So that kind of looks good. We'll show you this like close up here in just a little while, but for right now that looks pretty good. So now what I want to do is start to think about where my plants are going to go. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to use these little slate pieces to build a little stepping area up to this rocky edge. And I think I'm going to do it like right down into here. So I won't need a lot of this just because it's not very tall. So we're going to start placing these little pieces of stone on one another, building a nice little stepping area. Just like that. And now what we'll do is come back in and backfill some more of this with some more of our jungle mix where we've taken this away to build this stepping stone area up. So now what I want to do is just kind of fill in these cracks and crevices with just a little bit of dirt to kind of make it a little more solidified. And we want to pack this dirt up inside of here really tight to make sure that our stepping stones don't go anywhere. This kind of gives it a more naturalistic look as this stuff kind of comes together. And we will actually be filling some of these cracks and crevices in with moss and things of that nature, just to give it a more aesthetically pleasing look. What we'll do is we'll come back and make sure all this stuff is pushed down. We have all of our jungle mix in here looking good. What I want to do with this rabbit's foot fern, I kind of want to just put this thing like maybe covering these stepping stones a little bit. Maybe we'll just put that like right over here in the corner. So we're just going to bury that right here in this dirt. We'll let that grow the way it wants to grow. It'll do really, really well in this setup, which is good. So we've got that in there. Now what I want to do is come in with some moss. And this moss is going to be the best part of this entire terrarium. Oh, it smells like good old moss. I mean, look at this stuff. This stuff is great. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna find a couple of really good pieces that we can break up and put in here at different places. So we're gonna take like this little piece right here is perfect for like shoving down inside of these little cracks and crevices. We're gonna take some of this and we're gonna push it all down inside of here. And what we can use is our shovel from our terrarium tools. And we're gonna push this stuff all down inside. And this stuff will grow great with low light and all of the humidity. We also want to use some of our Christmas moss too. So this Christmas moss is great because this is more of a kind of stringy type of moss. And we're going to use some of this to kind of push down in here and this stuff will start to take off and kind of hang over. And then we'll put some down here inside of this little crack right here where it would naturally grow in the wild. And then some along the base here too, just to give it some 
greenery. And what we're trying to do is just hide where these pieces of cork meet together, where it looks more natural. And that's all we're doing with this moss here. It's just kind of hiding those little imperfections where you can't see that and it just looks natural. So kind of like that. So using some of this as like grass almost to kind of give this terrarium bottom a nice green lush looking area this stuff is so saturated with water it's so nice so we'll put that there we're gonna add a couple of like branches and little sticks and such and i'm thinking that maybe one should go in here like maybe kind of like here next to our yeah like right there kind of next to our little stair step and then with that we're gonna go ahead and add some more moss around the edge here, kind of pushing this up in there. And then of course, bring some on the backside too to lay in there. And that stuff will stand up nicely over time. Maybe we'll take some more of this moss here, kind of lay this up around the top. And some of this nice big piece here, kind of like up in the side here where it just looks like it's been growing on the side of this, covering this up nicely. And we have this little tropical plant. It looks like, I mean, it like comes apart in bunches. So it kind of looks like little trees. And what we want to do with this is first get all of the soil off of it and clean it really well. Cause we don't want any type of fertilizers and things like that inside of our terrarium we're gonna kind of plant this like little trees like back up inside of here where it looks like a little forest because this stuff will stay pretty low and if it doesn't what we can do is actually trim it which will be good but it looks like little trees and it's super cool looking so we're gonna add some of that in there maybe some back over here now we're just adding some more elements a couple of pieces of this dragon stone that we're just gonna kind of sink down into the dirt and then cover making it look natural like it fell there and has just been sitting there for a long time take a little more of this christmas moss we're gonna go ahead and stuff some of this down a little more of it down in here kind of like some grass growing add a little bit of rock back here now we're going to use a little bit of this cypress mulch but before we do we're actually going to cut it up because i don't want it to be overly large i want it to look more in scale so we're going to take these larger pieces out and just use this fine stuff because we're not going to need a lot of it. And what we're going to do is just sprinkle this stuff down around the bottom here, just like this. And we're also going to do the same thing with some leaf litter. But we're going to take the leaf litter and we're going to bust this up too. All right, guys. Well, now that we are done with this terrarium setup for this little nightstand, it is time to go ahead and stock it with some live creatures. And what we're going to be putting in here today is going to make this setup bioactive, meaning that it will be completely managed on its own. We'll have something to eat all of the mold that grows. We will have something to eat all the poop that's produced and all of the dead plant matter and things of that nature. It'll be a full ecosystem inside of this little table set up for our fish room. So what we're gonna be putting in here today, we're gonna to start with these orange scaber isopods. We're also gonna be putting in a lot of springtails. Now the springtails, what they're gonna do is they're gonna take care of the mold that grows. And in fact, if you see right here, there's some mold growing around this moss and that's just because of the moisture that exists in here. And that's just natural. Those springtails are gonna take care of all of that moss. Now those springtails are also gonna die. They're gonna produce waste. And the plant remnants that die, they're also gonna be producing wastes. And what takes care of that are these little orange scaber isopods. So let's go ahead and get these guys in here right now and get this thing finished. Up. So we have all of our isopods here running around and we're going to go ahead and start putting these guys in here and I'm only doing this one at a time because this particular bin that has these isopods in it had dwarf whites in it and the last thing I want to have happen is to have the dwarf whites overrun our setup here all of these guys are looking good they're all getting put in here they'll find little hiding spots and everything will be good you can see that one right there he's already going up inside there looking for a hiding spot and then we have one more here there we go and then we have this little piece of cuddle bone we're going to go ahead and put in here too they actually eat on that and it helps provide calcium for them which is needed for their exoskeleton to keep it nice and 
and hard. So those guys are in there and everything is looking good. So now we have one more thing to add. That are these spring tails. So we're gonna go ahead and dust a bunch of spring tails in there and those guys will take off. They will reproduce in here and they will take care of all the mold. So with that guys, everything in here is looking good. So let's go ahead and get this thing put where it's gonna be. We need to go ahead and spray this down real quick as well with some water and just moisten it really well before we put it away. But everything in this thing is looking fantastic. Well, now that our little terrarium table is complete and set up, we're gonna go ahead and stock the shelves down here with some of our essential products from API, things that we use on a daily basis. We're gonna start with some CO2 booster, some API Aqua Essential, which is our water conditioner, cichlid pellets, some algae wafers, some tropical fish flake, and some betta food. Some plant food and root tabs, and then, of course, some general cure in case there's any illnesses. Overall, I think that this was a great little DIY terrarium where we will be able to breed isopods quite well. And in fact, if you see them right back here, I'll zoom in here if, if we can see that, but they are out and they are making their home in this new setup. This thing has turned out amazing, guys. So make sure you like this video. Make sure you get us to a thousand likes so we can go get this amazing flower horn. But with that, guys, thank you so very much. I am truly grateful for each one of you. And thank you for watching my content. With that, if you haven't followed us on Facebook or Instagram, links to both of those are down below. With that, guys, hey, we will see you next time.